What's up guys, today we're getting this sweeping film reel look inside of Cinema 4D using spline wrap. What's up guys, Ryan here and welcome back to another tutorial. Hope you're having another great Friday. And today we're talking about a 3D film strip model inside of Cinema 4D. I had a project recently where I had to make a film strip real fast, start animating it and put it around a spline. So today we're gonna kind of go through those steps and I'll show you how I did that. If you want just a 3D model and you want me to shut up and just stop talking, we'll go ahead, uh, download the model and the project file in the description below. Otherwise, let's, uh, let's jump right in and I'll show you how I tackled a, a quick film strip model. All right, cool. So we're starting inside of Illustrator. Um, easiest way to start is I found this free film strip uh, vector online. So basically we're just gonna use this as our starting point and I'll show you how to get this started. So, so let's go ahead and start just by selecting everything and getting all those splines in there. I'm just gonna copy that and let's jump inside of Sim 4D. And uh, I kind of talked about this plugin in another tutorial, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use this plugin called CV Art Smart. And we're just gonna paste our object in here. And right now it's, uh, we don't know where it is in space. It's a little crazy. So I'm gonna take that out of that hierarchy. Let's delete that. We don't need the plugin anymore. And let's go ahead and cinder this bad guy here. All right, cool. So there we go. So let's kind of see what we're working with. Sometimes these splines can come in weird from most readers. So I'm just gonna select it. I wanna grab it, let's extrude it. And so let me turn on shading with lines. So what happened right here is uh, the model is just a little confused. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn everything 90 degrees there. And if you see, it kinda, you know, makes our extrusion go the right way. So there we go. So I'm gonna kinda do this in two parts today. I'm gonna show you a quick and dirty way to get up and running for your project. Um, but I'll show you the downside of it and why you might want to take it a few steps further. Uh, everything will be available in the download for free. So either way, let's keep going. So, so we kind of need a film strip look for my purposes. I actually needed a see-through model, no, no, uh, film strip in between here. So let's go ahead and just start moving this and I'll show you how to animate it along a spline. So let's grab our extruded object here. I'm just going to make it real thin. We'll go with one centimeter for now. And that looks good. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna bring out a helix to get our to get our film strip moving on some sort of spline. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and rotate this down a little bit and let's make it let's make it a little taller. And technically I went the wrong way, so let's flip it back over 180 degrees or bring it down. All right, cool. And so we got our little helix going up into the air there. So uh, the next tool I'm going to use is let's just label this film strip. And I'm going to go ahead and put this into a null. I'm going to do shift C to bring up our command prompt here. I'm going to do the spline wrap. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift while I select this so it goes inside of our null for us. All right, cool. So we have our spline wrap and now we just need to point it to what spline we want to use. So let's go ahead, select the helix and already we have some weird issues happening, but that's no problem. So basically it just doesn't know which axis that we're on right now. And so X is horizontal, Y is vertical and Z is going, you know, back in space, back and forth. So our object originally started in Y. So let's go ahead and try plus Y and see what it looks like. All right, cool. It's trying to stretch our film strip along this entire spline. So instead of fit spline, let's just go ahead and keep the length of our original object. And let's just kind of move the offset and see what's happening. So cool, so we're kind of getting there. What, what's happening right now, if you ever get weird issues like this, it's always pretty much a subdivision issue. And so the long line of our film strip doesn't have any subdivisions. And so here comes the two different ways of how you can deal with this problem. So I'll go ahead and select our spline Instead of adaptive, I'll switch it to a mode something like natural. And what that's gonna do for us is give us more points along our path. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And you know, I'm just gonna mess with the offset here. And as you can see, you know, if you need to get up and running and good to go, this will be one solution for you. But depending on your machine, this may be really bogged down for you. And you know, even with this method, we still don't have enough points in there to give us a smooth edge around this curve. So what we'd have to do 
is you know keep trying maybe maybe it's 20 points in between so that's smoothing out a little bit more let's go to let's just try let's just go crazy and try 50. we upped it to 50 points here and it smoothed out our edge, but let's look how much lag we have here. So if I kind of adjust the offset, it's almost not workable. It's, it's really chugging along. We can't really see what's happening. And so if this is as far as you want to go and this is the solution for you, what I would recommend is switching this to something like adaptive. And it doesn't look that great, of course, but you can kind of figure out your offset, your animation, you know, how you want everything to kind of go. And then when you're ready to render, just make sure to switch that back to something like uniform or, or any other mode to give you a better result on that curve. All right, cool. So that's pretty much what you need to get up and running. But let's say you don't want to do this method and you want to take it just a step further to not have lag and have that fast response and, you know, be able to work in the viewport a little bit better. Let me show you how we're going to do that. And basically all it entails is instead of keeping this an extrude object, we're going to make an actual polygon object out of this and it'll run a lot faster inside of cinema. So let's go ahead and do that method real fast. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this out. Let's group it. And just in case we need this later, this will be our originals. And I'm just going to hold alt. And that way, when I double click, it'll turn everything off. And I'm just going to take this out. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this a polygon object real quick. So what we need is we need subdivisions around all these square areas. Uh, the film strips, not so much because they're not deforming as much, but we need to be able to get more intermediate points instead of one point per corner on the film strip. And that might sound a little weird at first, but uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll kind of work through it and it'll make a little bit more sense here. So what I'm going to do is instead of having any extrusion, I'm going to set this to zero. So we have zero extrusion on this paper thin. And with this selected, I'm gonna hit C to make an editable object. And it's gonna take it out and we don't need this null anymore. All right, so now let me select point mode here and select the object and I kind of give you an idea of what's happening. So here we go, we only have four points on each corner. And what we need is more points in between these long stretches to not get that weird deforming that you saw earlier. So. So just a quick example, if I throw this back into our null with our spline wrap, and let me select the spine wrap, we kind of left off where we were. We still have this issue of this line. So let me go ahead and drag that back out. And let's do some quick, and I'll be the first to admit I am no modeler, but let's just do some simple, quick editing of this polygon object to give us some more subdivisions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of frame this in the middle here. I'm gonna switch from points to edge mode. And since, these are a little bit easier to select the middle of the film strip here. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the, just a rectangle selection tool. And I'm just gonna grab those edges right there. And I'm gonna hold shift. And I'm gonna grab these other ones now. And it looks like I missed a little bit down here. So I'll hold shift again to make sure I get that selection. And since that's kind of easier to select that way, I'm gonna do control shift now and I'm gonna start typing invert or, you know, I could have done UI. And there we go. We had the inverse of that selection and this is the point we wanna kind of start to subdivide. And a quick, easy way to do that, and let's just look at the points we have really quick. So again, not a lot of points running down the stretch. So let's go back to edge mode, hold shift and press C again. And what I'm gonna do is select edge cut. And what this is gonna do is basically give me an option of how many subdivisions I want along the edge and how I want to offset it and you know all that good stuff. And it's going to make it nice and easy and even along each section of these edges. So, uh, you know, maybe for example, we'll just go back to that 50 number and I'll hit apply. Let's we'll switch back to our point mode. And there we go. So, you know, the top's got more points because they're shorter than the sides. But what we have now is a lot of uh, points to work with when we start deforming it in the spline. Cool, so let's go ahead and take that. I'm gonna move another copy of this into the originals just by holding control. And let's switch our view here. And let's put this back into the null object that has our spline in it. All right, cool, so there we go. We got a nice clean spline. 
It's paper thin right now, but we'll work with that next. And now let's do the offset and see how we're moving here. So there we go. So we have a nice, uh, you know, not a jaggy edge and our response time is so much faster frames per second. So just real quick to give you another example of this, just to reiterate how much faster this process is if you ever run into other objects that might need to be simplified and kind of optimized like this, is I'm gonna do Shift V for our viewport options. And let's go to the HUD here and let's activate frames per second. In the middle of our frame here, it kind of gives us an idea of how fast we're running in our current scene. So we're doing, when we're moving around, you know, we're at, you know, 80, you know, 70 to 80 frames per second. So let me just turn this off real quick and let's bring back our one that was just extruded. This is still set to adaptive, our low res settings. Let's go ahead and move this back to uniform and let's set this to maybe 30. So 30 wasn't that smooth, but it was kind of working. All right, I'm gonna do kind of the same process. I'm gonna scrub the offset and let's see what our frames per second go down to. So we're getting less than one frame per second in some areas. Oh, and it just switched to wireframe mode there because it's a little bit too heavy and too hard to calculate, 12 frames per second right there. So that's just a quick sidetrack if you wanna see how your scene's doing. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna delete this. We'll bring our modeled one back in. Let's turn it on. All right, and let's scrub the offset on that. And right now in that part of the scene, we're getting 45 frames per second. So, you know, not too bad. Cool, all right, so let's keep, uh, let's keep moving on. So a couple things that you guys might want out of the toolkit, let's address that and you will uh, we'll work it out. So first thing is you might not want it this paper thin and I don't blame you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to group this real quick and I'm gonna actually hit this magic solo button so we can uh, take a look at this outside. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do shift C again, let's type in cloth. I'm gonna hold alt so our film strip goes into the cloth surface. And what we can do once we have inside here is I'm just gonna increase the thickness a little bit. And even that's probably too much. And we'll just do something like that. And now we have some thickness added to our film strip here. You know, and you can take that as far as you want. So let me uh, unsolo this. And you know, in our scene again, now I have a little bit of a thickness to our film strip. Another thing you guys might want that I'll you know make right now, and you can also have it in the toolkit, is uh, let's just do this again. Let's just solo this again. And maybe we want the little squares in between here. Maybe you add your own photo, maybe you add whatever. So let's make a few squares that you can uh, have in case you want to fill those holes. So I'm actually gonna do it inside the null here. I'm gonna hold Alt, select a plane. And the reason I did that is because even though it became apparent of it, um, it's good to kind of take it out because now we know this is in the same space as our film strip. So I'm gonna do is hit R to rotate this guy 90 degrees. Let's go to the front real quick. And we'll just do something like this. You know, I might actually make this here towards the bottom here. And it can probably overlap a little bit here. And we'll stretch out a little bit and just let me make sure it's in the middle of our film strip. So I'll put it right in the middle there. All right, cool. And so there's our first little square filled. I'm gonna select this again, Shift C for cloner or type cloner, hold alt, make sure it's in the cloner there. So Y normally would be right, but remember we rotated our object, so we're actually gonna cancel that out and go, let's see if we need to go up in the X. I'm gonna go back to the front view here so we can see it go up. So it kinda works right there. And let's just go ahead and keep adding them as we need them. Maybe we'll offset it just a little bit. Offset it a little bit more there. And we're good to go. I might actually just 
you know, just extend this a little bit more to make sure there's a little bit of overlap so we're covering our bases. All right, cool. So now we have our film strip in the middle there. Let's go ahead and unsolo all this. And right now we uh, forgot to put the film strip back into the spline. So I'll put that on top. All right, cool. And there we go. And kind of the last thing I can think of, you know, now that I'm sort of looking at this is what if you wanted this to be longer? So uh, let's, let's make it a little bit longer. What I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to group these again. And now we have our, you know, another film strip layer here. And I'm gonna magic solo that again. And what I would do, so I'll just go to the front view here. I'm gonna grab this, shift C for a new uh, instance so we're not, you know, making any more geometry really. And I would just line this up and let's get in here. Let's do a, uh, here we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the X and the Z. So when I align this, I can't move it anywhere, just up and down. And let's see, we need to bring it down here. So you could either match the square. You can maybe just kind of bring it down here a little bit. That looks okay to me. Let's go ahead and unsole that, get back out. And we just need to make sure our instance is with our film strip stuff. So there we go. A little offset and we're good to go. So <clears throat> the other great thing with this setup is, let's just go ahead, I'm gonna go to the side view here and I'm just going to freehand a spline, you know, something like this. And so if you didn't wanna use the helix anymore in your spline wrap, we just need to go ahead and select the new spline that we just made and you can animate it from there. And a couple of things you can do once you're here is Inside the rotation, here you can kind of determine how your banking goes and how it rotates. And, you know, kind of get, uh, you can set little, you can control click here, you can select points and the points, you know, kind of affect how your film strip bends when it comes to this point along the spline, which is pretty cool. Go ahead and just set this to default. Or another thing you can do real quick, just while we're here talking about it, why not, right? A couple more tips is, you know, you can take this spline and let's duplicate it. And, you know, just to show you, let me, uh, let me move it up just a little bit. And you can tell the spline wrap to have a rail that it follows. So right there, you know, if we take this spline now, which is our, you know, the spline one is our rail depending on how we move this rail will also determine the rotation of our spline here. So that's pretty cool as well. All right, cool, and there we go. I hope that helps getting started with this uh, spline wrap effect. And you know, this film model is available for download in the description if you want that as well. And uh, you know, the toolkit doesn't work with just a spline wrap. You can use cylinders, cubes, whatever you want to use to sweep around those splines or any spline that you make. So. Yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, thanks again, guys. Uh, tutorial again next Friday. We got more stuff coming up. Subscribe if you want to see that. And as usual, I will see you guys next time. Thanks, guys. We 3D tracked it. We have some Z space going on. And it just uh, looks pretty cool. We're going to have our beams follow it no matter where we reposition it.